Hello, my name is Nuno Laranjeira. I am an assistant professor at the University of Coimbra and I am presenting a method for interface fault injection on REST services. REST services are nowadays being used by major companies for exposing their business operations on the web. Companies like Google, Amazon, Instagram and many others are uh, offering a REST API for clients to invoke. Actually, the use of other types of services is nowadays residual and this, this is exposing the services to a variety of different clients uh, on the web. Contrary to other types of services like SOAP or messaging services like JMS, REST is a relatively loose architectural style and the less rigid access to the service operations open space for unexpected conditions. Um, this uh, may lead to residual faults uh, that may be present in the service to be activated by clients, which, uh, if a failure occurs, uh, may lead to financial or reputation losses. The main problem is that REST services lack practical approaches that specialize in robustness evaluation, so we have built a prototype for testing uh, from a black box perspective the robustness of services. So the tool works um, by essentially uh, following four main steps. The first step is the um, reading of the service interface, which is usually specified in an open API file. And it holds things like uh, the endpoints that can be uh, invoked and how the arguments necessary to invoke a certain operation, what is the correct response uh, for a certain uh, operation and so on. The second step is the generation of a workload which is essentially a valid set um, of requests that uh, in principle should not uh, trigger a failure of the service. The third step is very important and is the fault load uh, generation and execution. In this step we use the workload generated in step 2 and apply faults to the requests. So the idea is that a request holding a certain fault uh, may be um, useful in activating uh, some problem and triggering some failure of the service. Uh, the faults that we are using are uh, essentially rule-based um, and depending on the data types that we are sending to the services, uh, we inject uh, faults that are adequate to those data types. So if a service is expecting an integer, we inject uh, things like uh, the maximum value for an integer or the maximum plus one or minus one, or special values like zero, one, minus one, or if we have the domain of that parameter, we explore the limits of the, the domain and so on. If uh, the other the data type is uh, is different, is a string, for instance, we do similar um, mutations like uh, using overflowing the maximum um, size of the string, or setting the string to null or to empty, and so on. So these are essentially uh, rules that we apply depending on the data type of the, re of the arguments inside the request to the service. The final step is the, the storage of the re service responses and the analysis. The analysis usually implies understanding if there is a certain response is a correct response or not, if it is a, a symptom of a failure that has occurred um, in the service. So this approach is, um, is effective, however it has uh, several um, shortcomings. Currently the interface uh, description is very limited. We could improve this by using uh, natural language processing uh, and uh, the idea is to uh, leverage on the, let's say, the, the NLP algorithms to um, overcome the problem of incomplete or imperfect uh, 
service specifications. The second issue is that uh, the tool currently uses a random workload, but this is not really enough because uh, it, it works up to a certain point, but there are better strategies for generating workloads and we intend to explore evolutionary algorithms to uh, generate workloads that have, uh, for instance, better coverage. The third aspect is that um, although the generation of faults using rules is uh, relatively uh, effective, it also has limits. And we intend to um, use evolutionary approaches like genetic algorithms um, to generate a fault load that specializes in triggering robustness failures. Finally, um, currently the, the analysis of the service responses is a manual step. So this is relatively complex and we know that uh, machine learning algorithms are effective in performing such uh, classification tasks and this is something that we want to, to explore. Um, I will now show you a short demo of the tool and thank you for listening. Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to run uh, the black box tool for robustness testing of REST services. Um, our tool will generate a workload and then a fault load and the requests that are generated will be sent to the API that is being tested. Um, to run our project is very simple, you can run it as a Maven project um, or import our project into one of uh, yours uh, to run it. It's simple as download the zip file. I'm going to download it here. Then I'm going to unzip it. And then I'm going to the folder. And as you can see, we have the POM, POM file here. So we just need to make clean install. After that, we have the our target folder right here. Um, and we go to that folder to run. Uh, as I can see, we have the jar file here and we'll run it as a jar, of course. Um, and now we have to follow the argument syntax. In this case, we will run the default one, which just needs to API file and a Yelm file. The Yelm file is the file to specify the, is the open, if, uh, open API specification. Uh, we will be using the bikewise. Bikewise is available on the on the API specifications folder. We have a lot of, of APIs tested. Uh, we have public tier one, um, public tier two. Uh, we will be using the Bikewise because it's one of the simple simplest one. That's the reason why we're gonna use for the sake of the demonstration. We need to specify the the, the path, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just copy the path name very simple and then we need the api yum file that path too and i'm gonna copy i'm doing it on quotes because of the spaces it will generate um the, the workload and as you can see it's generating the workload and get the response the next step after the workload is finished it will get the workload and uh, inject faults uh, to the operations that are being tested. As you can see, one of the faulty injection was to replace with null. Well, while this is running, um, I'm going to show you how to include the project, uh, how to import the project in other other projects. We need to uh, add a dependency, of course. Uh, this dependence will be local, so not a big problem. We have already here the artifact is the REST API robustness tester, and we want the 1.0. Okay, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna import the changes. Uh, I'm gonna import um, the, the class that will be used, which is the REST API robustness tester. I'm going to instantiate that as a tool. Okay, 
and now we need to specify the API uh, file and the open API file too. Now the workload and fault load are finished. I'm going to copy those uh, paths that are needed. And now I can just simply uh, generate and run a workload plus the fault load, okay? We'll do a try catch and I will just run it. And this will basically do the same thing as it did before here and just will run it um, and get to that workload and that fault load responses. I can show you the results right now. Um, I'm going to show you the fault load because those are the most interesting ones. I'm going to zoom it. As you can see, for example, for this one, the fault was a replace with empty value. The values, the original one was uh, were these ones, and the faulty one uh, are these. And as you can see, we have a status code. 500, which is bad, it means internal server error, and as you can see, um, it was a SQL um, response, which is very bad 